Good morning, saints. It is good to be together in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And as it is All Saints Sunday, we'll be reading the traditional scripture passage for this day, taken from the book of Hebrews, where it lists um, through the ages the saints who have inspired us and helped us in our faith walk as well. I'll be reading a portion of that. Uh, from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32, through chapter 12, verse 3. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half, and others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us, so that they would not reach perfection without us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. In 1974, John Denver recorded a song that I really love. It's called Grandma's Feather Bed. And in this song, he describes all the wonderful times that he and his siblings and cousins had whenever they would visit their grandma's house. The song sounded like this. I just want to add one thing first, Mike. We did this song this morning. I was walking out, two young people were in front of me, and one said to the other, did Mike say 1974? The other one said, yeah, that was a long time ago. first one said, before I was born. The second one said, that was before my dad was born. And I remembered I was a freshman in high school. I told them we were out of donuts. When I was a little bitty boy, just up off the floor, we'd go down to grandma's house every month in the soul. Had chicken pie, country ham, homemade butter on the bread. But the best darn thing about grandma's house was a great big feather bed. Well, it was nine feet high, six feet wide, soft as a downy chick. It was made from the feathers of four to eleven geese, took a whole bolt of cloth for the tick. It would hold eight kids, four hound dogs, and a piggy that we stole from the shed. We didn't get a lot of sleep, but we had a lot of fun on Grandma's feather bed. Love that song. I love that song because it reminds me of of my wonderful trips back to see my grandma and grandpa. Now, they didn't have a feather bed, but I remember with great joy all the trips that we used to go back 
home as a child. Now, if you would have asked me when I was a little boy, what is it that makes you so happy when you go see grandma and grandpa? I don't think that I could have told you. And I'm not sure that I could even articulate it in full even now. But looking back, I do know that at least in large part, that joy that I felt at seeing grandma and grandpa was whenever we would go there, there was always a family reunion taking place. See, I grew up in Chicago, but both sets of my grandparents and all of my mother's siblings and all of my father's siblings lived in Fort Wayne. We were the only ones who didn't live there. So whenever we would go to see grandma and grandpa, everybody would come and visit and there would be this wonderful family reunion. The house would be noisy and crowded and full of activity, a veritable frenetic cacophony of chaos. And I loved it so much. I just loved being surrounded by my family. It made me feel like everything was right with the world. It made me feel secure. It made me feel happy. It made me feel wanted. Now, my mother, both of my grandmothers and both of my grandfathers are gone now. And I've not been back to Fort Wayne since the internment service of my grandmother almost 20 years ago. And friends, it's a sad fact that as we get older, we lose more and more of the people who made our childhood so happy and so secure. And I mourn the fact that those times are gone forever, but I thank God for the fact that those memories I have are still mine. And that security and that love and that warmth that I felt, that still feeds me. That still is a gift to me. See, memories are a powerful and a beautiful gift that God gives to us, and they continue to feed us and nurture us and even guide us throughout our lives. Now, have you ever noticed how certain things, inanimate objects, can just trigger wonderful memories for you? For John Denver, it was his grandma's feather bed. At the very end of the song, he sings, but if I ever had to make a choice, I guess it ought to be said that I'd trade them all plus the gal down the road for grandma's feather bed. Well, the thing that triggers my memory and the thing that I'd trade a whole lot for would be my grandma and grandpa's table. Now, to my knowledge, that table is not an antique. It's not worth anything monetarily. But to me, it has precious sentimental value. As I said, whenever we would make a trip to Grandma and Grandpa's house, the whole family would get together. And it was a joyous time. And these get-together at Grandma and Grandpa Johnson's house, my mother's parents, were even better because of this wonderful table that they had. You see, anywhere else that my family would get together, whether it was at our house, whether it was at the other grandparents' house, any aunt or uncle, didn't matter, anywhere else, being the baby of the family, I always had to sit at the kids' table. And I hated sitting at the kids' table. It made me feel like I was not really part of the family. It made me feel like I was second-class member of the family. It was as if I was being told, Mike, now when you grow up, you can join the family and be part of us. But not until then. Until then, go over there and sit at that table. Well, this was never the case at Grandma and Grandpa Johnson's house because they owned this magical, wonderful table. And it was magical and wonderful because no matter how many people were there, no matter how many people gathered to eat, there was always room for 
everyone at that table, even at Thanksgiving, when we would be wall-to-wall -wall people, there was room for everyone at Grandma and Grandpa's table. Now, the funny thing, it wasn't really big on its own. It, it actually kind of looked like a chest of drawers, and it was pushed up against the wall. But when the family would gather, they kind of grabbed these, these uh, handles and they would pull it out and they just kept pulling and adding leaves and adding leaves and adding leaves and adding leaves and they would make it as big as it needed to be to make certain that there was room enough for everyone. Now, I have no idea how big this table could actually get, but in the memory of, of uh, my childhood, this table was as long and as grand as anything that Camelot could possibly boast of. I'm telling you, the whole family would gather and we would all sit at that one table, even me, the youngest child, and I'm telling you, it made me feel so important. It made me feel like such a big shot because I'm here with everybody else. I felt like I was a full-fledged member of the family. And friends, I promise you, if I could go back and relive one day from my childhood, I would go back to Thanksgiving Day at Grandma and Grandpa Johnson's house, when the whole family would gather around this glorious table and have a meal all together. Now, when I was a child, I certainly had no concept of the sacramental, of the holy nature of, of breaking bread together. I just knew that it made me feel wonderful. It made me have great joy to be together as a family. But you know, there was a downside to Grandma and Grandpa's table, and that would be the noticeable hole that would be there every once in a while, a hole where a loved one used to sit, but a loved one who had died since we got together last. And nobody ever, ever talked about that hole, but I'm telling you, we all felt it profoundly nonetheless. But how the thought of that table brings back to me such wonderful memories. I can almost smell the turkey and stuffing, and I can hear my mom and grandma and my Aunt Carol talking in the bustling of the kitchen. I can see the Dallas Cowboys playing the Detroit Lions on my, my grandfather's cabinet TV. And friends, I believe with all of my heart that Holy Communion is very much like Thanksgiving dinner at Grandma and Grandpa Johnson's, only it's better. Because you see, at God's table, just like Grandma and Grandpa's table, all people are welcome. Everyone is welcome to come to the one table. See, there's no junior members of God's family. There's no second class citizens in God's family. There's no children who have to wait until they grow up to join us at the table. Everyone is more than welcome at God's table because he's already invited everyone. But here's the thing. The reason that God's table is even better than Grandma and Grandpa's table is because unlike Grandma and Grandpa's table, there's never an empty place. There's never a hole. There's never a place where someone used to be. And that's what we're celebrating today. That's what All Saints Day is all about because on this glorious day, we get to gather together and share a meal with all of our loved ones, those who are present here physically with us today, but also those who have left and joined the church eternal. At God's table, all are welcome. And at God's table, all are present because the glorious good news is because of our Savior Jesus Christ, even death cannot separate us. Even death cannot keep this family reunion from taking place. At God's table, 
There are no holes because all of us are here together. And I'm not just talking about in our imagination. And I don't mean in our memory or symbolically. I mean literally all of God's family are together. Listen again to what the Bible says. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us. Now remember, only together with us would they, the saints, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded, doesn't say anything about one day we will be, but since we are right now surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You see, friends, the Bible says that God had something better planned for us so that's only together, only as this great big family reunion will the saints then and the saints now and the saints yet to come be made perfect. You see, you and I are surrounded right now. We are surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses and they're squeezing in here right now. And if you will only allow God's Holy Spirit to take the scales away from your eyes, you will finally see clear enough to see the reality of this. You will see that the saints are with us right now. If you'll just really look and allow God to open your eyes, you will see that Jesus Christ is here, right here with us. Mary is here. Peter and Paul and Andrew and James and John, they are here. Augustine and Teresa right here at this table waiting to break bread with us. There's Martin Luther and John Wesley and Susanna Wesley and Francis Asbury and Abraham Lincoln and Mother Teresa and Donna McIntyre and C.S. Lewis, Dewey Agee, Marianne Higginbotham, David and Pat Owsley, Lou Crosswaite, they are all here, present and accounted for, waiting to share a meal with us at God's glorious table. They're all here because they've all been made whole and we have all been made one through the grace and the power of Jesus Christ. You see, friends, our earthly tables, they are packed full of holes of where people used to be. And every year that goes by, there are more holes. But there are no holes in God's table. I love this day. And I love God's table because I love sharing a meal once again with my mom. I have missed her so much. And friends, I want you to hear the good news. You too can share a meal right here, right now, with the ones that you love and have lost. So let me invite you to pay attention and to notice they're present with us because you can spend time and you can share communion with not only the saints who are physically here, but the saints in your life that you miss the most. Now, we might be elbow to elbow here at the communion rail, but I promise you, I promise you at God's table, there is room for everyone, everyone. Now, I love grandma and grandpa's table because everyone could be together and all of us around one table would share this meal of love. But you know what, my friends? My memories of such family reunions as special and as warm and as wonderful as they are, I'm telling you, they are only a pale and pathetic shadow of the reality of God's family get-togethers. Because when God's family get together, we are in every conceivable sense of the word made whole. We are loved. We are in the present of not just our families that mean so much to us, but we are in the presence of this great cloud of witnesses who are joining at this table. And we are in the presence of, best of all, Jesus Christ himself.
You see, in God's family, there is eternal joy. There is eternal love. And we will all be together forever. Because in God's family, we never, ever have to say goodbye. Thanks be to God for the life that we have in Jesus. Let us join the saints here and the saints above as we gather together at God's wonderful table of love. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.